Hey everybody! I decided to do a video this week. Um, I had read that directive before and thought maybe it was an old directive, and I don't particularly like doing videos, but actually it kind of is a load off to be able to, you know, not write out everything and make sure all of your grammar is perfect. And I do like the um, communication aspect of it, the aspect of it where we get to interact with each other a little bit more than we do when we're just writing back and forth to each other. So I decided to do a video. Um, this week we read The Wrong Grave by, oh my gosh, of course I don't remember her name. Kelly Link, that's what I thought. Um, and I don't know how you guys felt about the story. At first I was all in. I thought it was really interesting. I like that kind of supernatural you don't really know what's happening you don't know how the kid is going to end up that sort of thing um it did get to a point and it's funny because it was a, a change kind of in the pov where i wasn't on board with it anymore kind of after bethany came back as gloria and the whole thing just wasn't very cohesive for me but that being said the pov was definitely the best element of this story and that's why um you know, it was an interesting read and it, it taught me a lot. So first of all, we are supposed to talk about who the story belongs to. Um, and is it Miles? Is it Bethany's? Is it the unnamed narrator? And I personally think that, um, you know, it started out as Miles' story and then it kind of became Bethany's story at the end. Um, but I would probably say that it was Bethany's story. It was mostly about her, even when it, you know, had to do with Miles. But the use of an unnamed narrator that was a character in the story, but we're not really sure how, was a really cool way of not having to use Bethany's POV when, you know, she's dead and everybody's at her funeral, but then, you know, being able to go back to it afterwards. Um, so the, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure The Wrong Grave is a young adult story. Um, just by kind of the language and the things that, you know, happen, particularly at the end. Um, so the plot unfolds pretty quickly, um, starting, you know, with Miles and losing his girlfriend and giving the poetry to her and then wanting it back. Um, and I think that the narrator's perspective really helps the story out because it's not Miles's head or Bethany's head. It's this completely other person um, that is, I guess, maybe a friend of theirs. I actually was surprised about that whole thing. Um, I thought that at the end we were going to find out that the unnamed narrator was Bethany the whole time. So, you know, there are some cohesion issues that I kind of, that kind of turned me off to the story. But, um... I think the perspective serves the story in a good way and it influences our experience on the story because we're not hearing, you know, Miles's opinions, although we do hear his thoughts, or Bethany's opinions, although we do hear his thoughts, but the narrator's, who's kind of like an outside influence, yet it made us kind of feel like we were privy to something exciting and secret when like she, I think it's a she, tells the story to us. Um, like we almost feel like we're being told something interesting, you know, that nobody else might know. There's even points in the story that she actually talks to the reader. Um, I noticed one where she says, you might think at certain points in this story that I'm being hard on Miles, that I'm not sympathetic to his situation. This isn't true. I'm as fond of Miles as I am of anyone else. I don't think he's any stupider or any bit less special or remarkable than, for example, you. Anyone might accidentally dig up the wrong grave. It's a mistake anyone could make. <laughs> so, of course, it's kind of tongue-in-the-cheek making fun of Miles, but it's also interesting because it happens often where she actually speaks to you as a person or a reader, which, again, helps with the perspective and the influence that she has on us when we're reading because we feel like we're part of the story, too. And I don't think that she would have been able to do that um, if she had chosen a POV of either like Miles or Bethany first person or even a third person limited point of view. Um, so 
The next question says that the POV is first person and omniscient, which is rare and slightly unusual. Um, I had I was trying to think if I'd ever seen it before. I know I have, especially in young adult literature. They kind of do that whole, like, talk to the reader thing, and it's interesting, and I like it. Um, but like I said before, I, I think if she had chosen either a third person, even a third person omniscient, where, you know, we can still see what everybody's saying, I don't think it would have had that same kind of, um, I don't know, like... It, secret feeling where like we feel like we're being talked to as a reader um, it would just be a journey that we're watching and not one that we're actually a part of um, another question on this asks why it's important for the narrator to be a character in the story even though it doesn't appear <laughs> and again I was kind of a little bit thrown off by that whole thing in general I kind of was hoping that in some way the narrator would tell us who he or she was, um, if she was, she seemed to know Miles better than Bethany. I don't know if you noticed that, even though I really did think in the end she was going to end up being Bethany. But, you know, sometimes, you know, if it was Bethany, she would talk more about Miles than herself. Um, but I think that that is, you know, kind of something that maybe the author missed an opportunity, perhaps, um, in being able to like actually be a part of the story and let us know you know where where she is in the story is she an innocent bystander does she know them when they were a couple is she like a spirit in the graveyard is she another dead girl you know like I think that it would have been a good opportunity for her to um be able to make even another layer to the story um and last but not least what can we learn from this story how might we apply the approach and techniques that Link gives us um, in the wrong grave to the POV in our own stories? So, first of all, um, it's funny because I always say I don't want to write young adult, but I, sometimes I think that my stories are young adult stories because there's a lot of that kind of supernatural stuff. There's not a lot of, like, romance and sex because I don't feel comfortable writing it. So sometimes I think that maybe some of my work would end up being... Um, young adults. So, you know, the way that she uses vocabulary, her personas are, are really on point. Could, like, specifically, I found the narrator's persona to be the most interesting. And that ties in with the point of view because that point of view and that persona were so strong and so commanding where I wanted to hear more of the story from her um, that it was, it was interesting. And I think that it would be something that I would like to try out. As it's, you know, as was said earlier, the POV is, is different. You know, this is a character that had nothing to do maybe even with the whole thing. She might just be a friend of a friend or something more nefarious. Um, but I think it's cool how she used the POV to talk directly to the reader. And that's something that I think I might try. In fact, it gave me a sort of idea um, for our next short story. So, um, it was cool. I didn't love the ending of the story, but I did think that Link's POV was, uh, something that is interesting and emulatable, and I hope you guys didn't get too bored with my video. <laughs> I do like this, uh, format, so I hope other people would do it. I don't know if I'll post replies in a video, but it's possible. So, thanks for listening, and everybody have a good night and a good weekend. Bye.